In part two of our series on configuring forms-based authentication with SharePoint 2013, we're going to cover creating the SQL database that we're going to store our FBA users in. We typically recommend using the SQL membership provider for FBA because it's A, more secure, and B, it allows us to have a lot more features for our FBA users, such as um, user self-service, uh, role providers, and things like that. So the first thing we need to do is actually create our SQL database. And we do that with a utility that's actually installed when you install SQL. And it's under C Windows, Microsoft.net, Framework 64. And we are going to be using version 4 to create the database. And uh, previous versions of SharePoint, you wanted to use the uh, 2.0.5. But with 2013, we're going to use the version 4. And we're looking for a utility that is called ASP.NET underscore RegSQL, which is right here. So let's launch that. We'll get the welcome screen. We're just going to hit next here. And we do want to configure SQL Server for application services. We don't want to remove it. So next again. Pull this down a little bit. So this is just the name of my server. We're not using instances in this case, so I don't need to put anything there. And for the database name, I'm just going to type directly over the top of this uh, default that's in brackets, and we're just going to call this FBA. Next, and next again. And now at this screen, we're just going to click Finish. Now let's go take a look at our database, and we're going to fire up SQL Management Studio. Go ahead and log in. And so if I click on databases and then FBA, I can see it's been created and it has all the proper schema and other configuration that we need for our FBA database. The next thing we need to do is be sure that our application pool identities for both the security token service as well as our content site have the proper permissions for the database. And we do that by going to security, users, and we're going to add users from here. So let's go verify which accounts we're using for our application pool identities. I'm just going to fire up IIS Manager here and go to Application Pools. And as you can see, the security token service is using um, service underscore SQL, and our FBA one is using SP App Pool. So let's go add those two users to the database. Right click on Users, get a new user. We're going to choose Windows user. This is for SQL 2012, by the way. So let's see, let's go out and browse SVC underscore SQL. There they are. OK, OK. I'm just going to copy and paste this above to create their actual username. That's all we need to do on that page. So now we want to go to membership. And what we're going to do is just put a check mark by everything that ends in full access on this page. And that's going to ensure that they basically have full access to the database and all the permissions they need. There's five total. So we've got membership full access, personalization full access, profile roles, and web event. We'll click OK. And as you can see, the service underscore SQL account's been added. Now, let's go one more time. Windows user. I'm going to browse. So we see underscore, we'll check the names here, and there's our SP app pool account. Okay, and again, just copy and paste above. And then over to membership, membership full access, personalization full access, profile, roles, and web event. Great, so now we've added both of our application pool identities. They have all the permissions they need for the SQL database, and we are done with SQL Server at this point. So that completes part two of this four-part series. In part three, we're actually going to go in and edit the web config files. And in part four, we'll actually go ahead and import some user data into the SQL database and test our authentication.